In this video, we're going to learn about Q and how it relates to K. So let's talk first about reaction quotient. Um, K is based on the reaction quotient, so that uh, what we know about products over reactants, um, that is equal to K. Well, that's equal to K if the system is at equilibrium. But if the system is not at equilibrium, then we should just say that the reaction quotient is not equal to K, it's equal to Q. A little bit weird, but let's put this into practice. So say we've got this equation for the dissolution of salt into aqueous sodium and chloride ions. For this, the equilibrium constant is 37.66 at 25 degrees Celsius. So this question asks, a large chunk of sodium chloride has, uh, is added to 1.00 liters of water. After a few seconds, some of the NaCl has dissolved. Um, there's still a bunch of undissolved salt, um, but the part that has dissolved has left us with a 0.1 molar sodium and a 0.1 molar chloride concentration. Is the system at equilibrium, we're asked. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that Q is equal to the concentration of the products, which is Na plus concentration um, and Cl minus concentration. And over the reactants, except wait, the reactant solid, so forget it. Um, we're only going to deal with these aqueous ions. Um, so this is equal to 0 0.1 molar uh, squared, really, because they're both the same, but I'll just write it out. Sodium, 0 0.1 molar, and chloride, 0 0.1 molar. And so this is equal to 0 0.01. So our system is apparently not at equilibrium because the K is significantly bigger than Q. If K and Q are not the same, then you don't have a system at equilibrium. Um, so what this tells us is that we're not at equilibrium, and it also tells us that the system is going to have to shift rightward to achieve equilibrium. How do we know this? We know this because K is significantly bigger than Q. You want to look at it like if we were to have, say, 0 0.00001, for example, this is a really low value of K. And then over here, we're going to have, say, like, you know, what, 100,000. Okay, great. So this means lots of products, right? Lots of products. And on this side, we have lots of reactants. Um, if we're at here which is 0 0.01, this is where we're at, we need to keep going towards the products in order to hit this 37.66 that is the equilibrium constant um, for this particular reaction. So we need to continue going rightward. We need to push towards the products. And this probably makes some sense because a 0.1 molar um, solution of sodium chloride is not anywhere near saturated. You could keep on dissolving more and more and more salt to get to that uh, equilibrium point, um, where also known as saturation point in the case of a, a solubility type problem. Um, so there's that. And then I finally have one more problem just to see a slightly different angle. So in this case, we're going to say that Q is equal to, we need products over reactants and everything is a gas. So we have 5.0 molar uh, CH3OH in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to have the concentration of CO, which is 0 0.2 molar times the concentration of H2, which is one molar, and I realize that should probably be 1.0 molar, but whatever, one molar squared. Um, so if we you know, multiply these out, um, what we'll find is, sorry, it's actually like that. Um, what we'll find is that it is um, five over 0.2, which is equal to 25. So Q is equal to 25. Now what this tells us is that this system, which has 
a bit of carbon monoxide, a bit more hydrogen, and quite a bit of uh, CH3OH gas. Um, if we compare that to K, what we see is that we're kind of past, we're too far weighted towards the product. So in this case, we're going to have to shift leftward to get our Q down from 25 to 14.5 if we want to establish equilibrium. So this is not at equilibrium and it will shift leftward. So no, not at equilibrium and the shift is leftward. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.